Hi and welcome to this video covering some of the improvements and new features found under the Objects menu. The first thing we'll be taking a look at is Subdivision. Mari Extension Pack 4 replaces the existing Mari Subdivision dialog with a new one. In this dialog, we can subdivide multiple objects at once, while Mari's st standard dialog usually only allows you to subdivide one object at a time. The dialog follows the familiar scheme of the Mari Extension Pack dialogs since Mari Extension Pack 4. So we have the filtering at the top, you can invert the filtering, case sensitivity, and all the usual buttons of add an object, add all objects, etc. And here at the bottom, we have more or less the standard Mari options for subdivision. So the first one is the force subdivision on poly shapes. Mari uses open subdiv, meaning that you can separate shapes that should be subdivided and shapes that should, should not be subdivided via a tag. This tag usually needs to be added in your 3D host application, so for example in Maya. How exactly you're going to add this, you can look it up. I've added the necessary links in the extension pack help under the subdivision topic. However, personally, I'm not really using the tags, so I usually want to subdivide things. However, if these tags do not exist, Mari will not subdivide, which is standard, unfortunately, in open subdiv. So there's this force subdivision on poly shape option, which will disregard any tags, regardless if they're there or not. Mari will just subdivide everything regardless. The next option, the switch to highest after division is pretty self-explanatory. Once the subdivision has finished, Mari will switch the object to the highest available subdivision. Speaking of highest available subdivision, Mari Extension Pack offers the option to subdivide up to four or five times, while the standard Mari dialog usually only options uh, has only options for three subdivision. Obviously, be careful if your object is already very heavy, you might introduce a lot of polygons. Subdivision scheme and boundary interpolation, meaning UV interpolation, is the same options as in the standard Mari. And let's just run this once on this object just because I want to show you something. On this object, I already have subdivision applied, meaning basically I don't need to subdivide this object. However, I'm going to get a message now saying that it's possible that the subdivision process failed. And that is simply the reason is that, well, actually I didn't. Okay. Um, let's try this again. So now we already have subdivision. And the way the tool works is it will check your highest subdivision level before subdividing and after. And if there's no change, there might be a possible geometry error. For example, your geometry might just not be subdividable because of uh, manifold, uh, non-manifold geo or something like this. So you can see here, I've got a dialog saying, okay, there might be a problem because basically the before and after is exactly the same. So in this case, you can just ignore it because obviously sub the subdivision worked. However, if you come across this dialog, something might be up, but ignore it if you've already applied subdivision once. Next up, let's take a look at the export object dialog. Again, the UI has changed and it's now in line with all the rest of the Mari Extension Pack 4 dialogs with filtering and options here. Also, the path and template options are in line with, for example, the exporter. So here the path is grabbed from your default variable for geometry export that you can set under the file project path, which is also an extension pack feature. So here we have a geometry import export option. So this would be your default path for this project. If you want to change this path and make it actually stick, so I can add a folder here. However, once I close this dialog and reopen it, this folder will not be there anymore or the path to will not be there anymore unless you make it stick to the project using the pin icon and then this path will be your new default path for the entire project for geometry exports and imports. Revert back using the reset button to whatever was previously there. Option wise we have the always save without subdivision level which was there in previous Mario extension pack version as well meaning that on export if there is a subdivision applied the exporter will first switch to level zero and then export your geometry. If the option is ticked off, another option becomes available, save copy without subdivision level. Let's just run this once. And now in the details, we can actually see 
There have been two objects exported, once the gramophone OBJ, which was exported at level 1, as it is in your project at the moment, and then a second file gramophone no sub D, meaning a copy without subdivision applied. So this way you can get in one click, more or less, the two object versions you might ever need. Let's move on to the export UV masks. Again, the UI has changed and is in line with the rest with filtering, etc. The export path settings here are the standard export path for texture exports. So again, if you make a change here, um, let's say we name this UV mask and pin it as the new default. And now this is the new project default for anything texture export related. So even if I go to the standard my extension pack exporter, you can now see in the export path of this exporter, the UV mask folder has also been added in. Option wise, we have the option here to save unsubdivided UVs, meaning that on my currently subdivided object, if the option were off, I would make a snapshot of the UV masks, including the subdivided UVs, meaning for example, your boundary edges might be different than from the level zero. So if you tick on the save unsubdivided UVs, before exporting the UV masks, your object will be switched to level zero and then the UV mask will be exported from that. This covers the changes to object related options or operations and see you in the next tutorial.